What's up YouTube, welcome back. Dr. Chad Connor here, board certified internist, current chief medical resident and soon to be cardiology fellow. Today I'm talking with a great friend of mine, former roommate, actually kind of a lookalike, although I personally think I'm a little better looking, uh, Dr. Josh Hayden. He is a chief resident in anesthesia at the University of Minnesota and will be pursuing a fellowship in cardiovascular anesthesiology. Uh, welcome, Dr. Hayden. Hi, thanks for having me. So oh man. Happy to have you. It's good to see you. It's been a while. We used to live in Chicago together and we were always, we were always confused for twins. Dr. Hayden actually does have a twin brother who is the ugly duckling of the three of us. And uh, so it was a good time when we were living there, but great to see you. Yeah, you as well. Certainly, certainly miss those days. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll get started here. Um, sure. Dr. Hayden, can you please describe to us a little bit about like what is anesthesiology exactly? Sure. You know, since that's what I do, I'd be love to talk. I'd love to talk about it a little bit. So, um, you know, there are many misconceptions regarding our chosen path of patient care. So just think for a second, what's an anesthesiologist and how do they care for patients? I do fear that a lot of people, um, or at least those that are unfamiliar with the field, suppose that our job is just to inject patients with a medication or a drug inducing a state of sleep. That is certainly and obviously a big misunderstanding. Anesthesiology overall is a practice of medicine that is most dedicated to pain, uh, paraprocedural care, uh, especially during more invasive procedures. Um, and actually, contrary to popular belief, our role as an anesthesiologist has actually expanded greatly um, in the past or over the past few years um, as we continue to care for patients in all avenues, such as that of paraprocedural or surgery, childbirth, uh, critical care, chronic pain, preoperative clinics, the list can go on and on. Um, additionally, anesthesiologists take leadership roles um, within a hospital in areas such as management, patient safety, medical school and professorship, and even on national healthcare committees. And so you'll, you can see an anesthesiologist anywhere. And, and what we do is very broad. That's great. And, and now I know that your brother Jacob and I really tried hard to pull you towards cardiology, which my very biased self thinks is the best field in medicine, but obviously that's up for debate. What made you choose anesthesiology? Well, despite me choosing just anesthesiologists, I am pursuing a fellowship in, car in cardiac, so it's not like I've left it far behind me. So as far as why did I choose this field or why did I not choose medicine specifically like you and my brother? Uh, well, I'd first say that finding your niche or your place that you truly belong can actually be a pretty arduous task. And I say this because I, like most new medical students, I'm sure, had some idea where they want to end up when the dust settled. But I firmly believe that your relationships and your experiences will prove and um, have proved for me to play an important part throughout my journey and throughout your journey. So I will say, like medicine, many subspecialties and specialties certainly seduced me with their qualities, their residents, their faculty. But I think at the end of the day, the question would always, the question would always end up being, could I do this as a career? So before I begin to recite my personal statement on YouTube, I'll just tell you what I found to be most important as far as choosing anesthesiologist and why I did not choose internal medicine. Um, I would say first and foremost, I certainly felt like I belonged here. And I think a really good gauge here is how well you mesh personally and professionally with the people in the field. So those around me, at least when I did my anesthesia rotations were very dedicated. They were hardworking, extremely competent and adept procedurally. And I say procedurally because much of what we do is procedural based. Um, I'd say next anesthesiology provided a good combination of in the moment critical thinking uh, while being very, again, procedurally oriented, which is what I was looking for. Um, interestingly enough, um, one of the aspects that turned me away from other subspecialties such as medicine was the fact that um, I felt like I was spending way too much time away from the patient, writing notes, putting in orders and those sorts of things. It became very electronic and um, robotic for me. And that's what I was not looking for. So I wanted more time in the now, caring directly for the patient, solving those difficult problems. Um, and as we know, or as I know, the anesthesiologist is intimately involved in the events surrounding a surgery. Um, and this to me was a big draw. 
Um, and then I'd say lastly, um, my work-life balance and day-to-day -day workflow fit perfectly um, with my lifestyle. Um, and while I mentioned those other things, I do feel like this could be the most important aspect or important reason compared to those listed before, just because this aspect specifically actually governs my person as a whole. So I found pleasure um, in the vastly different cases um, that I would be exposed to on the daily. And I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, as the saying goes, there's many ways to skin a cat. Um, so there's peace in knowing that I have the luxury of conducting my own anesthetic differently than that for my neighbor, <clears throat> but while still achieving a common goal, which is patient care. I think you mentioned some really important points for current medical students and residents to consider when choosing a path. And I think the, the most important there was the work-life balance. And for me, myself, I honestly don't think I considered work-life balance until the birth of my daughter just this past September, roughly six months ago. That really changed my whole perspective on you know, what I want to pursue as a career. And obviously you had that insight much earlier. And I hope that if, you know, medical students, college age students or current residents take anything out of this video, it's just the fact that that is something I think that needs to be considered very early. Because when you're young and you're training, you know, you can work 80 hours a week easily, but is that something you're gonna be able to easily do when you're 40, 50, 60 and you have a family? It, it's a lot more difficult. So I'm glad that you brought that up. I certainly agree because it was, the work-life balance was certainly kind of at the top of my checklist when I was checking those certain boxes off when I was applying for residency and trying to figure out what specialty I wanted to choose specifically. So um, knowing that I had that in my background and in my mindset really helped me choose a career path that I know I'll be happy with 20, 30 years down the road. One other thing I think is important that we haven't talked about in prior videos for people to realize is that your compensation as a physician is not something that should guide your direction into a particular field, but it's certainly something that needs to be considered. After all, college education, medical school education is very expensive. I know that we go into a lot of debt to become a physician, and so it's nice to be compensated afterwards just to be able to keep your head above water when you're paying off these loans. So with that being said, I took a look at the Medscape 2020 uh, Physicians Report. Uh, so for anesthesiologists, na the national average is $398,000 a year. That's a very nice, healthy compensation, which you could easily live off of and pay, pay your student loans. It's something that needs to be considered, I think, when people are looking into a profession, but definitely not something that should be the, your sole focus into going into the profession because you need to love what you do. And uh, that's the only way that you're going to be a good physician. So I wanted to mention how much you know we make as an anesthesiologist. Um, I'd just like to mention, I certainly agree with those numbers and while that being a national average, um, those of whom choose this field are going to see a wide array of numbers. And I say that because if you choose academia or if you choose private practice, you're going to see a totally different number or compensation package based on that path you choose. So, yeah. but again, whatever path or whatever you decide to do should not solely be based on those dollar signs or the, or how big or low that number is going to be. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, uh, Josh. What do you recommend for medical school students or current college students who are considering anesthesia as a career? How do they best prepare themselves for the application process and then to start residency? You know, the first thing is, is as a medical student, just make sure you rotate through the specialty. Anesthesiology is one of those elective rotations. And so it's not something that's required as part of your medical school training and do more than one rotation if it's feasible or if you're able to. I would also recommend that you do an away rotation rotate another institution facility, see how those different operating rooms are run, get a sense of the nature of the specialty and like find your niche just like I did. Next, and I think this is a very obvious one here is study hard and do well on your board exams. Mm -hmm. These board exams are important, but they show us more than just your ability to retain medical knowledge. Now, again, while important, I do sincerely believe that this should not be the most important aspect of your application, but doing well will only help your efforts in securing your dream specialty or your dream program. And then while you're rotating in anesthesia, um, I would say show interest, just show us that you care. Um, when you're rotating through, take a keen interest in the patient, the case, the procedure, et cetera. I mean, there are many, many aspects of patient care that an anesthesiologist is involved in. So don't be afraid to get your hands dirty.
Thank you. And explain the training a little bit. So how many years, you know, let's say after college, so four years of undergrad, how many years after that until you are a board certified anesthesiologist? Sure. So you'll go through medical school and residency. Um, residency for anesthesia is four years total. And that includes a one year prelim or transition year. And what I mean by that is you will do a first year that's either a prelim surgery or medicine or a transitional year, which is kind of all encompassing of many specialties. Um, one of the unique aspects of anesthesia, like a few other subspecialties um, go is we are, we have two pathways, one being advanced and one being categorical. And what I mean by that is and that kind of dictates what your first year is going to be. So if your first year, your prelim or transitional year are done at a separate institution, your program is what is called advanced. And that actually requires a separate application in the match and additional interviews, albeit those interviews are not hard to obtain. If your first year is combined with your program, it is considered categorical. That requires one application and one interview at that one program. Now, while this may be confusing, when you start going through this process and applying for interviews and kind of uh, coordinating your rank list, it becomes very much less confusing. Um, so I don't want to kind of muddy the water here, but just know that there's different pathways to take as far as securing an anesthesia residency. Um, additionally, after residency, you can do a fellowship. All anesthesia fellowships are only one year. And so I feel like that's a big benefit of securing or gaining some extra education and training in the field. Many things that we train in or, um, Many other fellowships that we can train in would be those of cardiac, such as what I'm doing, critical care, OB, pediatrics, chronic pain, acute and regional pain, um, just to name a few. Oh, that's, that's great. So a total of what, that's four years of medical school, four years of residency, and then additionally, potentially one year. So as many as nine years of postgraduate training. That's correct. That's correct. Awesome. And so I know you talked a little bit about the work life balance, but now that you're actually in the field, how do you find the work life balance to be? You know, I find it to be great. I mean, the work life balance as a resident is always hit or miss depending on what your program is and depending on what um, they expect or they expect from you. So I guess I can kind of take you through with the day in the life of what I do. And so yeah. I wake up about five in the morning. I'm in the operating room by six in the morning to prepare my operating room, or if I'm in the ICU to prepare my list of patients. Um, typically speaking, surgeries at our institution here in Minnesota starts around seven or 7.30 in the morning. And so we have from six until that time to prepare our operating room, talk with the surgeons, talk with our staff anesthesiologists, talk with the patient, those sorts of things that get prepared to make sure that the patient is ready for surgery. Um, and then we'll do our cases. We'll do either one case, two case, three cases. It just all depends on what the schedule has in store for us and depending on what rotation we're on. Um, and then here at our institution, we are done at three o'clock every day. Um, post three o'clock is what we consider protected study time. So we have lectures and simulations and those sorts of things. Um, so our, our work-life balance here, I would say is pretty good. Um, additionally, we don't take Q3, Q4 call like a lot of other programs do. We are scheduled a certain amount of call or weekend call or weeknight call throughout the year. Um, and again, it's not um, too much for anybody to really complain about. Yeah, I'd say that's an exceptional work-life balance, not only for a physician, but especially as a resident, much better than I had, that's for sure. But uh, Dr. Hayden, I think this has been fantastic. I thank you so much for coming on. Uh, anybody who's watching, if you have any questions for myself or Dr. Hayden, please leave them in the comments below. We'll be sure to get back to you. Otherwise, until next time, peace out, everyone.